And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at an unpublished game, but one that's on its way out. We're going to take a look at Regami, which is a game from a Portuguese designer. Uh, you may know him from his game Vintage that came out in the United States uh, just recently. Uh, this game is a game not along the lines of wine, but more along the lines of angels versus demons. Uh, players are going to control angels and saints, uh, as well as moving demons around the board and trying to earn victory points by resolving conflicts between the angels and demons. Uh, the angels being called Regami after the name of the game, or the name of the game is after the angels called Regami. Uh, each player will control their Regami, trying to get them into conflicts, resolve those conflicts for victory points, uh, and maybe banish some demons using their saints in order to get further victory points. And the player to first to get to 30 is going to be the winner. Uh, well, maybe. The first player to 30 is going to end the game, and then you'll total up extra victory points, and the player with the most victory points will be the winner. So real quick, why don't we take a look at this game for two to four players. We'll see how it plays really quickly, and then we'll come back here and get my final thoughts on it. Here you can see the setup for Regami, and as I mentioned, this is a game about angels and demons and saints and trying to resolve conflicts between them in order to score victory points. Each player on the board is going to have three things. They're going to have their saint, which is a meeple, which will be on one of these street spots. You can see them here outlined by dashes. Uh, you're going to have a Regami, which is your angel, which will be starting on a building, uh, which we're going to be surrounded by streets, and each of those is going to be called a block. And you're going to have a die. Uh, it's called a virtue die, and it's going to basically assist your Regami in fights when conflicts happen around it. Now, the game is going to revolve around taking actions. Each player is going to take actions in turn uh, using dice. Now, these dice are going to be rolled at the beginning of each round by the player in last, uh, and they're going to distribute them on the board in these three action spots. Uh, now, there is a caveat. If you roll a one while you're rolling these dice, the, ro the ones are red, you're going to actually put a demon out onto the board. You get to choose where, but the demon goes out onto the street somewhere, and this demon is going to be able to be used to get victory points and to make conflicts harder. After you've rolled the one and placed the demon, you're actually going to place it on any side you want and place them out onto the action spots. Now you'll see I rolled all threes in this case, so they're all going to go onto there with three actions available for the turn. On a player's turn, they're going to be able to do one of three things, and you can see there by the three actions. We have one, two, three actions, all of which can be used differently. The first one is going to be able to move a saint up to four spaces. It doesn't have to be your saint, it can be anyone's saint, but you're going to move a saint up to four spaces using these adjacent road spaces or street spaces. And if you move them into an area with a demon, let's say for example this saint moves to this demon here, demons are always red, you're going to get victory points for ending on a spot with that because you're going to vanquish the demon. If you kill this demon, he goes out, and you would score one victory point for a saint killing a demon. And you're going to mark that on this track, so that was green, he would receive a victory point for having done so. After you have moved your saint, you're going to have to place a demon on the board or move a demon that's currently on the board. So you can either move one demon up to four spots, maybe you want to move it to a conflict to make it harder, and we'll go over that briefly. Or you could put a new demon on the board anywhere you want it as long as there's one available to be placed out. The second action is going to be to draw cards, and cards are going to modify what you can do on your turn. Usually you can only do your one action, but if you have cards, you can play them to supplement what you do on your turn. So you're going to draw three, and you get to choose one of them to keep. Cards do all kinds of different things. For example, this one here says that you give the player in last place one victory point, and then you get either two or three of these cubes. And these cubes are going to help you in battle. They're called power cubes. We'll use those in conflict. We'll come to that shortly. If there are two players tied for last, you give each of them a point, you'll get three cubes. So, could be better. This one here is going to allow you to start a conflict outside of using the conflict action, which can be important. Uh, but you have to pay one of your power cubes in order to do so. Or we have this third one here. This says that you can basically use an action uh, as if not using the die, but you have to pay a cube to do so. So essentially if a die has been used all the way to the point where there are no more of that action left, you can simply pay a cube to use it anyway. And those cards are going to let you modify your turns in many more different ways than what you saw right there. But this one allows you to draw three cards and keep one. Uh, and then the last one is going to be able to, or to allow you to do a conflict. And in order to do a conflict, your Regami, which you can move uh, using different actions, and I'll go over that briefly, uh, you can move him to a conflict. Let's say, for example, the green Regami is here in this conflict. Uh, moving Regami is actually accomplished by using any of these actions 
and simply choosing the bottom option instead of the top option. All actions can be used to move a origami rather than taking the normal action. Resolving a conflict is going to make you match the conflict's difficulty with the amount of power that you have or need to pay. Each conflict, die, here shows a number of pips. This one shows one pip, and these are randomized as you roll them. So that one has one pip, uh, and it has one demon present at the location. So you have one difficulty for the pip and plus one for the demon being present. This means that the difficulty of the encounter or of the combat is two, and you're going to have to have at least two power. Now, you can get uh, power or use power by having these power cubes, which you can obtain in various different ways, one of which is actually having your regami present when someone else resolves a conflict will get you two cubes. You can also use your virtue die. So green's virtue die is over here, but if it were over where purple's is, they can use points from their virtue die in order to add power. And if this virtue die ever goes to zero, it comes off of the board. So they could get one power from rotating this to zero, and that would make them only need one more power to resolve this conflict. In addition, you can actually get a bonus in power from having other people's regamis present in your spot. So if yellow's regami was over here, that's two power. I wouldn't actually need to use my virtue die, and I would have enough power to defeat this conflict without adding anything else. However, yellow is going to get two power cubes for being present and helping me. The final way to have power added to you is to have somebody else's saint present with you. That would actually be yellow. So let's say yellow saint was here and yellow's regami wasn't. Because a regami and a saint of the same color can never be in the same spot. This saint adds one to my power. So we have two conflict, minus one power means I only need one more, and now I could use my virtue die to get that last power, resolving the conflict. When you resolve a conflict, you're going to get as many victory points as the die shows. So in this case, I would get one victory point for this. I would move up my marker, green again, one spot, and I would move up my conflict marker, one spot, in order to show that I've resolved one conflict and I now have two victory points. As you take actions, you're going to rotate these dice down, showing that these actions have been taken multiple times, and there are three actions available for each type. As you get them down to one, you'll see that they turn red, and there's only one more action of that type available. When that action is taken, you're going to move it to the bottom, and that action is no longer available unless you manage to use a special card which allows you to take an action, such as the conflict card I showed you earlier. In addition, each time you resolve a conflict, you have the choice of rolling this die, which is the conflict die which can potentially add more to your power. You'll see it has one, two, or there are blank sides which have zero on them. If you roll that die, you can no longer add anything to your power after you roll it, so it's kind of a chance to resolve a conflict without having all of the available power, which you can either succeed or fail, and if you do fail, you'll have to retreat back to an empty block where the conflict is no longer happening. You're going to go through this until you manage to get all of these actions down to zero, at which point the round will end. At this point, you're going to basically rotate all of these dice. These conflict dice will go up by one. They'll become two here, in this case, if the, unless it wasn't resolved. This one will become four. This one here will become two. They'll all go up. Any of these dice that weren't used, the virtue dice, will rotate up by one, uh, plus one for each regami adjacent. So, for example, if green were to have their die here, it would actually go up two because he's present, and it goes up one automatically, so he's now going to have three virtue power, and you're going to go on with a new round. You would bring out some more conflicts by rolling these black dice if any of them were removed. So let's say this conflict was resolved, you'd roll a new one. You'd roll a new one. I dropped one on the floor, but you'll roll a new one. It comes out with a six, which is very difficult. You would pick a random location and flip it over, which is 16, and that die would go out on spot 16 with the, uh, with the die so that you can go and have a different conflict in a different area. Now this brings up an interesting point. If you ever need to rotate these up to seven, you're going to actually close an area off to Regami Passage because seven difficulties don't ever happen. If this happens, you would remove the die from the board and you would flip the location over to its opposite side. You can see here it has a no Regami Passage, meaning that Regamis cannot move through here, nor can they stop on this spot, and nothing will ever really happen in this area. You're gonna go through this until one player manages to hit 30 points on one round. Uh, overall, so they're going to try and get to 30 points. At this point, it'll be the last round of the game, and you'll add up victory points at the end. You'll get victory points for trading in three pips on your virtue die for every one victory point, and you can actually do this during the game as well. You'll have victory points for resolving conflicts, victory points for power cubes that you can turn in, uh, and whoever has the most victory points after one player reaches 30, 30 points and ends the round is going to be the winner. 
And that is Regami. Now, as you can see, this is not a heavy game. It's probably a medium weight game, one that you're going to be able to sit down and learn relatively quickly. Uh, simply, in each turn, you're going to be taking an action by moving one of those dice down to a lower pip. Use that action either to move or to do the special action that's written on the space on the board, and then resolve any conflicts as you may see fit using cards or if you chose the conflict action, playing additional actions to try and further your place in the game while leaving your opponents behind. Although there are some cards that are actually going to force you to give points to your opponents in order to try and benefit yourself as well. Um, as I said, fairly simple. Take an action, play some cards. Uh, but has a level of depth in trying to maneuver your pieces uh, and move your opponent's pieces to best benefit you while not allowing them to get to areas that are going to be good for earning victory points. Now, as I mentioned, this is a prototype edition of the game, so there may be some changes before the game actually comes out, but I would expect for it to remain mostly the same. Uh, so if this looks like something that's interesting to you, check out Regami when it is eventually released in the United States, uh, which should be relatively soon. Uh, I think you might enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.